Ah, okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jacob Gonzalez. Uh, I work for uh, Search and Care. Um, it is a social service agency uh, in between in Manhattan, in between uh, East 95th Street and 96th Street on 2nd Avenue. Um, we are a, we mainly help um, older adults, and our main mission is to provide older adults in the uh, Manhattan area, or the Upper East Side, um, Upper West Side, and East Harlem area, um, the, the resources that they need to stay independent and live in their own communities, okay? So, um, we have many programs within the agency, and this is one of them. This is a, a tech assistance program called Silver Circles. And um, I created this workshop for folks because I feel as if the I learning icons is, it's something that we do, I think, instinctually, you know, like for instance, um, having a remote control, everyone has a remote control or mess with a remote control or, you know, use, use a VCR or DVD player, right? So you know what like the play button means, you know what rewinding means, you know, fast forwarding, right? Um, so everyone knows those types of icons and usually what they represent. OK, and so in the computer world or, you know, like in with our phones and our tablets, our computers, there's additional devices or icons like that um, that represent things across all devices. So, for instance, if you see an icon on your phone for settings, it's usually going to be the same thing on your computer or on a different type of phone. So let's say you have an Android phone and an iPhone. There are going to be some differences, but there's also going to be similarities with those icons. OK, and so let, let us begin. And um, I just want to let you know the main reason I started this um, this session or this workshop was because I was working one day with my grandfather and he needed help with his with his cell phone. And he speaks mainly Spanish. So his cell phone, he has it set up. So it's all in Spanish. And I understand um, a decent amount of Spanish, not a lot. And I can't really speak it. But. I was looking through his phone, helping him out, and I noticed everything's in Spanish. And I could, I can mostly understand what what it's saying, but I was mainly looking at the icons. I was able to help him out by mainly using the icons and navigating my way through that. So I don't know. I had the idea of, hey, if you know what these icons mean and how they function, you can sort of utilize this across all languages, you know, or you know, and many devices. So I think. This is a really good stepping stone to really learning about technology that we use on an everyday basis. Okay, so let us begin. So let's see here. What's the first slide? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this presentation will share a collection of commonly used icons. And, you know, like I said before, familiarizing yourself with these icons can help you navigate common websites and applications. Okay, and so what is an icon? So an icon is an image on your device's screen that represents an application or like an action such as sending an email, sending a text message, um, being on a phone call, things like that. There are, there, there are icons representing those actions. And it's always a good thing to learn what these, what these icons, you know, how they function so that, you know, you'll be able to navigate properly. So if you want to unmute yourself, it's totally up to you if you want to interact here. Um, I usually start off by by asking folks, what do these icons here represent, right? So for instance, what what does this green, I, I think we all know what these, like <laughs> these companies re regard, relating to these logos, right? So for instance, does anyone know what this left green icon is about? Anyone? Starbucks. Okay, okay, great. And you know everyone knows Starbucks. Like if we weren't even to use the the actual title on these logos, right? You would just know what what it represents. Starbucks represents coffee, right? And if if you see the golden arches, what does that usually oh, what does that usually mean? Like burgers and fries, correct? Right. And the same thing with with Apple. It's it's devices, computers, tablets, things like that. So the way we associate actions or you know what what these logos usually represent is what i'm trying to get at with these workshops okay so we'll see we'll see what i'm talking about okay and i'm and i'll also be sending everyone out with a a take home um pdf or a photo of all like one of the main images we were like the main icons we were talking about today okay so you have something to take home or you know print out 
and then you can use it. Um, you can leave it by your computer if you would like, just to have something to to reference. Okay, because I know we're going to be taking in a lot of information here, and I'm going to try to keep it at, at 45 minutes, but it's already 10 minutes in, so we'll see. Okay, so uh, here we go. So um, these are just some examples of of applications we use. These are for phone applications here, and if you see on the bottom. There are some icons, if you can see my cursor as well, on the bottom of these images, there's a bunch of icons, right? So you have like, um, actually, let me, show, let me show you something. They, they all look pretty similar, right? You see like a, one icon here, it looks, it's the same on, on eBay. So you have Amazon, eBay, and Walmart, and they all really share similar icons, okay? And I'll, in this next slide, should point them all out, should circle it. Um, so if you can see here, you know, like this magnifying glass, it's showing up on eBay, Amazon, and Walmart. This little person icon here, we'll, we'll go into it, but it's showing up here once again on Amazon, eBay, and Walgreens. So this is what I mean. So like a lot of, once you, what, what you learn here is going to translate to other applications and other websites and other devices in general, okay? And so... I think this may be the most basic icon we have here today. Actually, there's another one, but this is the most basic icon. Can anyone tell me what this icon represents? No, oh. no one? Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, home, definitely, definitely. And so just to let you all know, usually when these icons are being created by designers, they want to go as basic as possible so that it's easily um, translatable to other devices, right? Because you wouldn't want it to be a brick house with a chimney and a doorway, like a, like an actual door, because it'll look different for every, you know, for every application, right? So usually folks want to keep it very simple and um, usually black or white. And usually, honestly, usually black because it's it's more readable to the human eye. So, like you said, it is for the home. It's a home. It's a home button, and usually this button um, takes you back to its starting to the website or application starting point. So, for instance, if you're on YouTube, and I know I do this all the time, where I go down rabbit holes upon rabbit holes upon rabbit holes of videos. It could be a puppy video going into cat videos, who knows? <laughs> and let's say I get lost in the sauce and I need to get back to where I started, right? I would find the home button and I have some examples here and it would take me back to my original starting point. So I have some applications here, some examples. We have Uber and you can see on the bottom of, their, of the screen, um, it's on the, ho it's the, the home button is on the bottom. Same thing with Venmo. If everyone, if anyone's used Venmo, it's a it's a cash um, sending application. Um, there's that home button once again. Same thing with Instagram. It's gonna it, on the instead of, be, of it being on the bottom of the screen, it's gonna be on the top right of the screen. This is um a photo of of using Instagram on a PC on a on a Windows computer. Um, but the idea still translates, you know, where this is the home button and you get you get sent right back to the main to the main page, right? Same thing with Facebook over here. It's, it's usually going to be either on the top of the screen or on the bottom. So it's easily accessible. Okay. And so now we have the magnifying glass or it looks like a magnifying glass to me, but does anyone know what it usually stands for in on devices? Search. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, awesome. Because a lot, funny enough, a lot of people don't don't know that they think it's for, um, and, and it could be actually used for zooming in on objects. But for this one, um, it's usually representing a search. So we, and it, similar to the to the home button, we usually find this icon on the top of a website or an app, and you know that's where we're able to type exactly what we're type where we're searching for. So for instance, if we're on Google, we can type puppy videos and we can search it that way. Um, but I always like to think of it as just think of, you know, just think of yourself as a detective. What does a detective use a magnifying glass for? Searching for clues, okay? So just use that, just keep that same mentality, okay? And so I have a, a couple of examples here once again. So we have um, for Airbnb, which is a um, uh, an application where you can reserve um, homes with folks um, for a weekend or two. And so on this application, you know, if you want to search um, for a specific location to stay at, you know, you would go to the top of the screen and look for that magnifying glass. And usually it does tell you like next to the icon, it would say like search or it would give you a bit more information as you can see with this Airbnb example. It's saying where to, it's trying to give you a hint as to what to type um, on that search bar. 
Um, similar here with Spotify. Um, it's a music application where you can just search up any type of music you want. Um, it, once again, it gives you that little hint. So on the top of the screen as well for this application, it's it's that it's a big old magnifying glass, and it's asking for you know an artist or a song or a podcast or you know to to to, to search for and so that you can use and listen to. And then everyone knows the the usual um, you know example of Google. This is the, the main search bar right here. It's going to have that magnifying glass. And if you're ever on Windows, it's the same thing here. It's going to have another um, magnifying glass button. And it's going to also just going to it's going to accompany it with uh, saying the word search and like finding files and things like that. OK. OK, so now this might be a bit of a tougher one for folks. But does anyone know what this icon represents? Mm hmm. OK, I may have stumped some of you then. OK, so for this one, there's there's actually going to be two icons we're going to be discussing in this section, um, this one and this one. OK, so <laughs> it's you technically could be using this. Um, this would be your photo. Just imagine this cute little dog is your photo and a little circular, um, you know, photo. Right. So this actually represents a user profile. So, for instance, if you sign up for Facebook, um, for Reddit, for Google, uh, not Google, <laughs> uh, Instagram, you know, things, Twitter, things like that, you're going to have a profile associated with it. Usually, um, even on YouTube, things like that, you can have your own channel and you can uh, subscribe to other channels and go that way. Um, but yeah, looking at your profile um, these icons help you look at account information. So if you're trying to change your password or if you're trying to look what emails associated with your profile, you would probably want to click on this on this icon. OK, and sometimes it would even show you your own profile. So, for instance, if you're on Instagram and you want to see what others uh, how others view your your page for your photos, you would just hit your user profile icon and it would send you to your profile page. OK. And so um, these icons are pretty similar across all devices. It's usually going to be either, you know, this photo of a, of a person this is a silhouette of a person. You know, it's the head and then some broad, shoulder, curvy shoulders. I don't know. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. And then, um, you know, your, your own photo. Those are the two um, most, most common icons we see here. And I'll show you some examples. So this was actually uh, an Instagram post I saw of this dog. So I decided to make that my profile picture. Um, but if you see here, here on the bottom of, of the Instagram app on your phone, there's that profile icon again. And so for some of these, it won't say, it won't accompany um, a wording like, like that search bar, right? Where it would say, oh, you know, search, you know, artists, blah, 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 or find photos. This will usually just have no wording associated with it. So um, you may have the occasional uh, acceptance like on Airbnb, where it actually mentions profile on the bottom here. Same thing with Twitter. Um, if you're looking through your home page and you notice um, this little person icon, that's that's for your profile. So you would actually be able to see um, what your profile looks like compared to others. You know, so and I have another example here. So this is our YouTube page for searching care. And if you can see on the top right, which is where is usually um, where these icons usually are at. Um, do you see a little photo here? It's a little portrait, a little circular portrait. That's our user profile or like our, our profile account where we can actually click it to get more information. And if you see here, the next photo, there's more options once I click that little that little user account, right? So I have a bit more information here and I could even check my channel. If you see the first option, and look at that. It's actually showing us a square version of that user profile icon. So this is what I'm getting at where, you know, these icons are sort of universal across all apps and devices. So just, just keep that in mind. All right. Um, but if anyone has any questions, you know, um, please either you can stop me at any moment or you can type it in the chat and Daniel can read it out to me. Okay. Just wanted to let you know. So the next slide we have, and um, we have an, a very important a very important icon, which I know many of you may may already know, but if someone can just shout it out, if someone knows what it what it stands for. No, no one. OK, well, it usually stands for settings. And this is this is why I'm saying it's a very important icon to know, because if you're having a new device, um, if you're helping out a friend, if if us, if we're coaching someone, 
uh, an older adult and we're trying to look through their device and it's the first time we're looking through their device, we want to look for the settings, right? So the gear icon right here is usually that is what it's representing, okay? So um, this icon represents the menu where you can adjust options such as your device's display sound or font size. So for instance, if you're on an Android or an iPhone and you've noticed that the, the, the wording is too small on your phone and you would like to increase the size, or if you want to increase the brightness of your phone's device, um, just if you look for the settings icon, this gear, you will, you will most likely find those options there, okay? So I have a couple of examples here. So we have um, for Android, it's the same it's the same icon as we see on the left here it's the same exact thing copy and paste essentially but apple's being a bit pretentious and they've added a bit more detail to their settings it's still it's still an it's still a gear icon per se but they've added a bit more detail so it may it may be a bit tougher to find at first but you want to look for the idea the concept behind the icon so the the concept here is that gear icon and it's sort of doing a similar thing here okay Oh, I think we have. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, so we have the settings here for the iPhone and the settings for the Android and similar for Windows. It's the same thing. If you if you're looking for settings, it's going to tell you these are the settings and that gear icon. That's what you want to look for when it comes to that. OK. So, oh, oh no, <laughs> I sort of spoiled it. Okay, so since we're all on Zoom today, and I usually have this workshop in person, this may be the easiest one out of out of all the out of all the icons, right? And um, I think we can all just assume that it's going to be about video. Okay, this is going to be the easiest one. Um, so this is for your Zoom calls. This is for FaceTime um, or regular video calls. You're always going to look for a video camera icon. So it, it could be like Zoom, it's very basic. For FaceTime, it's very basic. Just one's blue, the other one's green. You're usually gonna find this and on any device or app that allows, that has a camera, a, a part of it. So just wanted to let you know that. And so we have examples here. We have WhatsApp, which is a free application where you can actually do um, video and phone calling. And so for this example here, Someone's getting a call. Simon's getting a call. He looks shocked. He looks very shocked about it. And um, we are he's seeing two options. He's seeing to decline the call with a with a horizontal phone icon and then to accept the call with a green video camera icon. So usually um, if it was a regular call, this would be a green phone. But since it's a video call, it changed now to the video icon. So that's how you know um, it's a video call on top of the fact that it's saying Simon incoming video call as well. So, I mean, you can, you know, you can, you know, you can, you can do two, two and two. You can, you can associate things, you know, and, and you can, you can figure things out. But if you really want to look for the video camera, that's how you know that's that video calling is enabled. Okay. Same thing with Ring Central. This is a, a program we use at the agency ourselves and this is Millie and if we wanted to text her we would press this button over here the little dialogue button or to call would be the phone but obviously if you want to do a video call you want to hit that video icon so this is like another basic um icon that's available to folks um so yeah and before okay so before I go even further does anyone know what this icon means No one? Okay. All right. So this icon, I would like to, you to focus on the down arrow. Like, why is it going down? Because it is a download. Okay. So this is a good way of remembering it. Um, just the down arrow. It, you're, you're usually going to see this across all devices, um, either one or the other with these uh, these icons here. Um, and what, what, the, what downloading usually incurs is um, it allows you to copy data from one computer system to another typically over the internet. Um, and this also means you can download things from on your onto your phone and things of that nature, okay? Or your tablet if you have one. And so here are some examples of downloading icons and usually where you would find them. So for instance, if you're on Google Chrome and you're downloading something, um, you will find your downloads in this section or this tab rather, and you will see it with the down arrow and the little flat line. So that just means you're downloading, okay? Um, similar idea here when you're on Gmail 
and you have someone that sent you an, an attachment, let's say like for instance here, it's a Con Edison bill and you need, you need to download it. So you have it for your records. Just look for that down arrow, okay? And that's how you know that's you're able to download it and save it onto your device um, for safekeeping. And similar thing, so similar thing here on YouTube. There are some web uh, videos where you can actually download YouTube um, YouTube videos, and so you would find it um, by the by the video itself. And right underneath the title, there would be a download button. And once again, there's that down arrow with the flat line. So I honestly think this icon is a is it's very it's similar to the settings icon where a lot of folks keep it very very similar, not not crazy changes at all, just not to confuse folks, especially when. We're we're dealing with downloading okay all right so now we have oh by the way so any questions you can i'm just going to stop now before anything if you have any questions oh okay um so does anyone know what these icons mean there there are two different um there there are two different icons and they actually have they serve two different purposes so if if someone wants to just chime in All right. Okay. So actually, so this is a photo gallery I, uh, button icon and a photo camera button or icon. Okay. So a photo gallery is where you would usually keep all your downloaded photos. Like let's say you're on your cell phone and you take a bunch of pictures. Usually you're going to find your photos in an icon similar to this. But honestly, over the years, um, a lot of phone companies have been changing what the phone gallery would look like for different devices so it's it's really tough some days to really differ, differentiate um between an android gallery icon and a windows icon you'll see in a moment so this this icon represents where those photos are stored and then the photo camera represents the fact that you can actually take a photo on your phone okay or even on some uh i think zoom or skype was able to like screenshot some like if you're on a video call with someone, you're able to screenshot and usually would have like a little camera icon. That's how you know that's the case. I think that was on Skype mostly, but but moving forward. And this is a very, for the photo camera itself, it's very basic. Um, this is usually what it looks for, looks like on the, on the iPhone and comparing it to the Android, very similar. Um, actually for the Android, it's a bit more basic than usual. It's actually a, a bit, just more of a, like a curved rectangle in a sense, but either way, um, it's, it's the same gist. Like you have the little photo lens here and the little power button there. Okay, so that's how you know. And then for the photo gallery, this is what I'm. This is where I'm coming from, where it looks a bit different now between each device. So for iPhone, you have a more of a of a blossoming flower in multiple colors, and it looks as though Android is sort of trying to 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 copy that in a sense um, with a, another like a dandelion type of icon. And that's how you know it's a it's a it's a photo gallery. But usually this was the, the photo gallery icon on the top left here. This was the original icon that folks would mainly reference for photo galleries, right? So if you look on the top right here for Windows, you would see um, this folder here with a little landscape image that usually means it's a photo gallery it's it's still it's it's a more detailed icon compared to the left side here where there's like mountains or it's like a silhouette of a mountain with a little sun um they actually try to draw like you know provide a little small image there to let you know that it's a part of the gallery okay and similar here there's another icon from windows where it's it's per, it's two mountains and a, and a moon or i think it looks like a moon um but same idea as this left icon here as well okay so um I know it's a bit confusing as like some, you know, some companies go with one icon for galleries and some go with others, but mainly um, you would want to try to look for this, this open flower look or, or these mountainscapes, these landscape icons. Okay. All righty. So now we have these two icons and I think these two icons are pretty, pretty important. Um, so does anyone know what these mean? No. Okay. All right. I'm still going to be asking just FYI, <laughs> just in case. Um, but okay. So these two icons represent sharing. So we usually find these icons on social media, um, usually any website where we would want to share something. So for instance, like a news, a news website, um, a news application where you want to share an article with a friend. Um, even Facebook does it now where you can share. I mean, they've done it for years now, but um, they you can share um, articles that way. 
Um, you can even share images, videos, and files as well, okay? And so for Facebook, I'm going to show you places where there's um, where one icon's on one website and another icon's on another. So for Facebook, if you see here, this is just a little article I found. And, um, you know, you could put your, you could like, you could comment. But if you look to the right of the comment button, there's this share icon. And you can tell with this little arrow pointing to the right. That usually just means you just want to send it out. Um, there's, I honestly don't think there's a rhyme or reason to it. Um, but as opposed to these other icon I'll, I'll represent in this, or I'll show you in a second. So um, yeah, if you ever wanted to share an uh, share an article with someone or a document over Microsoft Word, because now that it does that now, where you can actually share um, documents through um, Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, and so uh, you, if you look on the right side here for the Android, um, I was actually looking through my photo gallery and I found this adorable dog named Calvin, who I used to walk a bunch. Um, and if you see on the bottom here, there's these three, this this three dot icon. Okay. So I honestly think this this share button is a better one than the arrow because it sort of represents where it's going to, right? So you're think of it this way: the three dots represent one is you. One is the article or whatever you want to send. And then the other dot is the recipient. So your friend, niece, nephew, things like that. I, I It's sort of, this icon sort of going away and the people are using more of this large curved arrow, but there's still many, many websites that still utilize these three dots. So just keep that in mind. It could, it could either be one or the other. And it's, and it's tough to say which website or app will, will use which, okay? So does anyone have any questions on that before we begin or before we uh, move forward? Oh, okay. Okay, so this one, this one, this one, this one, if we come out, if you forget everything that I just said to you, or if you already knew everything I said to you, great. But this is the one, This these four icons here are pretty important, I think. And um, I a lot of folks either don't really know how they work or how they function, okay? So I want to just ask once again, does anyone know what any of these icons represent? No? Okay, okay. So um, these usually represent drop-down menus. So for instance, if you're on Zoom right now, at least on my end, I see the icon. If you look where you can actually mute yourself or start your video, things like that, you will see, at least on my end, um, there's an option that says more, and there's three dots for me. So that's essentially a drop-down menu that shows you additional options, right? So um, these four icons, they all mean the same thing. So um, if you want to look for more options for a website or an app, they're commonly found on the top left or right corner of a web of a web page slash browser. Okay, so for Google Chrome, it will be on the top right hand side of your screen where you'll see the hard, the uh, the vertical dots, and that just represents um, more information. That just represents um, additional options that you can do within the website. Okay, um, same thing with these with these. I'll I'll keep going forward and I'll show you some examples. Okay, but let's just keep it going and I'll show you a way how to remember these icons. Okay. And this is my favorite method of learning anything, comparing it to food. Okay, so um, these four icons, if you look on the bottom here, we've named them hamburger, kebab, bento box, and meatballs, because the actual designer, the original designer of these um, of these icons, they did um, they they went based off of food. So, for instance, you have the hamburger, which is usually three um, horizontal lines that represents the drop down menu, and it's just the same thing as a burger. You have the buns; it's a very plain burger. So you have just the buns, the patty, and more buns. Okay. Um, you have the the vertical dots, which is which are kebabs. So if you look on the top, it's like three three meatballs in a sense, three vertical meatballs. Okay, think of it that way. Um, the bento box, that's just a compartmentalized um, like lunchbox, essentially, and it has usually a lot of compartments. So um, these nine squares here, they represent a drop down menu as well. Um, but that's how I like to think of it as like a like, as a little lunchbox, as a little separated lunchbox. OK, and then obviously for the meatballs, the horizontal three dots. OK, so 
if anything, just remember it as food because that's the way I do it. And by the way, I'm going to be sending all of you the um, the pitch deck, the, the slides here, so you have a reference, all right? Okay, so now here are some examples of, of at least three of these icons, okay? So on Facebook, let's say you wanted to, let's say you have someone that is spewing a lot of garbage on Facebook and they're your friend, but you're like, I don't want to tell them and I don't want to delete them. I'll just hide their posts. So like if I don't have, I don't have to interact with them, but I don't want to see their post as well. So if you look at an article that they send you or they send this to the public on Facebook, there's usually going to be these three horizontal dots. And then when you click on that, there's going to be additional options here. So um, you can save the post if you want. You can hide the post so that um, you'll see less of those, those those types of posts. So like if someone's sending you puppy photos and you don't want to see puppy photos, you can just hide the post and it'll um, Facebook will learn that you don't like puppy photos. So it'll stop sending anything like that to your homepage. Okay. And then you can also snooze people, which, which means you temporarily stop seeing their posts. So once again, if you have a, a family member or a friend, you don't once you don't want to tell them that you're gonna you know, they're unfollowing them or you're you're no longer being their friend, but you still, you know, want to act as if you are, you can just put them on snooze so that you won't see their post for at least seven days. I think you go up to 30 days. So that's an, op an additional option on your drop down menu. Okay. And you wouldn't have even seen it without it. You would, you would probably only see how to like comment and share the post, but just always just double check to see if there's any dotted dotted lines anywhere or any horizontal lines, just so they have more information available to you. Okay. And so this is what I was talking about. If you see on the Windows option here, on the, on the Windows example here, sorry, um, on the on this photo, this is for Google Chrome. And just like as I said, on the top right hand side of his of the screen here, this is that that heart, that vertical three dots. And that's where you can have um, you can add a new tab, a new window. You can check your downloads. See, it's a very important uh, button to learn because you can check your downloads there. Um, you can check your history. You could do a bunch of things if you click on the top right hand side uh, and click on those dotted lines. OK. And if you see here on the right hand side, you have um, Advantage Care. Uh, it is a, a medical website that you can use to see appointments and you can uh, you know, check all your medical info here. And on this website, it does have a hamburger icon where it has the three horizontal lines like I was talking about. And when I click on it, it gave me these account settings. Gave me these account settings. So I could check my personal information, uh, security settings, you know, I could check um, you know, you could check a bunch of things. All right. And also just to go back to what we were talking about as to how these icons all mesh together in a sense, if you look after I press the drop down menu, what do I see here? What's this icon again? It's the user profile icon. So that's where we're able to see our personal information because we're, we have an account with this website. So we're able to now, um, check additional info. All right. So once again, that's a very important, um, these are very important icons I think we should all learn because it just opens things up to more options, all right? Literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, okay, so moving forward, uh, I'm pretty sure we all know what this icon here is if we're all on Zoom right now. So Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> and, um, and if you usually, you can tell if you're on Wi-Fi, um, usually by it, seeing the icon, seeing like either... Uh, this icon on the left here or this other icon uh, near where you see your time, your local time on your computer or your device. So for instance, um, on your phone, you're probably going to see it on the top right hand side of your screen. If And if you see that icon, that means you should be connected to Wi-Fi. All right. Um, uh, for Windows, if you look on the bottom right hand side of your computer, you will then see the Wi-Fi icon there if you are connected to Wi-Fi. Um, and so there, yeah. And so here are some um, here are some examples. Here I have the iPhone example, and it's once again this should be on the top right hand side of your screen if you're on an iPhone. And same same thing here for your Android. Um, there's the Wi-Fi symbols there, so that represents the fact that I am now using Wi-Fi. I'm able to connect to things. Um, and this is the same thing for Windows. Once again, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you should see um, things such as the time, the date, but then you should see that you're connected to Wi-Fi if you are once again connected that way. And does anyone know what these icons represent? No, yes, yeah, no, no. 
Okay, I'm just going to go ahead. <laughs> and so these represent, actually, I added another um, icon here because I realized um, that there's another uh, representation here. for. So this is for phone data and your phone signal. So a lot of people get phone data and Wi-Fi a bit confused or misconstrued. And so for let me just go back for one second here. So if you are connected to your router, so this, this image here on the bottom, right, uh, the bottom of the screen, um, you're usually going to be connected to your Wi-Fi, okay, if you set it up that way. But if you're trying to go on the internet, but there's no Wi-Fi available to you, you then would want to look into having data for your phone. Or usually a lot of phones do come with data. It all depends on your plan. Um, but if you ever heard like advertisements saying unlimited data, things like that, or a data plan, um, this is what they're referring to. So this is the ability to call or use or uh, to call or use the internet through a cell phone tower. So like imaged below here. Um, and you can see with these icons um, that these represent that you're connected to, you have a phone signal and that you're able to use data. Okay, and I'll show you some examples here. So for the Android, um, we have we have a couple of icons here and it could get a bit confusing um, because there's a couple of icons all smashed together, okay? So usually if you see 4G, 5G, or even 6G in the future, that's represented, that's data. There, there, people are talking about data, okay? And so usually you're either gonna see um, 4G LTE, 5G LG, LTE, and like a down arrow and an up arrow, at least for Android. And that usually means that you're now using data, okay? Um, and so on the icon here on the right, this is just your phone signal. That's your phone signal strength. So let's say you have data, but then that, but this icon right here, it only has one bar available. That means you're gonna have the very weak internet signal, okay? Um, it's similar to making a call. It's gonna have a very weak call signal as well. You're probably not even gonna be able to hear the other line or the other line's not gonna be able to hear you, okay? Um, and there's a similar idea here for the iPhone. So you have the phone signal on the left here, and then you see 5GE, that means you're on data right now. So if you see that, once again, if this icon on the left was at one or two bars and you had 5GE here, it's not going to be a very strong signal, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? Um, so are there, I know this could be a bit confusing, so are there any questions about this? Yes, thank you, Alex. Okay. <laughs> you anticipated. So here's <laughs> the deal. If I understand this correctly, yeah. uh -huh. for example, let's say on an Android phone. Okay. Uh, if the, the cell tower mm -hmm. is the equivalent in terms of connecting with the internet, the cell tower allows the user of the Android phone to connect with the internet in lieu of having a router. So exactly. That the router, what the router is, let's say, to old school traditional uh, home um, office, the cell tower is to the phone it gives the juice to have Ex the connectivity to the internet. Exactly. And and it's and it works this way as well, where there I actually have some clients where they live on the 20th floor of a building. And the higher they go, the weaker signal that they get for some for some strange reason. It could be like the the range of the cell towers just don't reach it for some reason. Um, so it is the same idea. So like if you have a weak router or a weak signal with your router, because the further you are away from your router, the weaker the signal. Same thing here. If you're I guess if you're higher up and there's some apartments actually that are ground level where um, you know sometimes data or signals get lost. Same idea there where it's if it's a weak signal, you're gonna have a a, a weaker connection to the internet or even you're sometimes not even able to connect to the internet because your signal is so weak so does that answer so your question yeah absolutely alex mm -hmm. so what's interesting you can be too low and too high and you get disconnected you Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it's all varying and it, and it all depends on your cell phone carrier too, because um, um, like for that instance with that client, we called Verizon and then they had to get something called a range booster where like it's a, it's a device that would boost the signal of the cell tower, you know, something like that. So it, it actually is, it is a possibility that depending on your location. So like, for instance, if you went down to the basement, right, you lose all connection, same idea. Sometimes if you yeah. go too high up, 
it, you can lose it that way as well. It all, but okay. it all depends as well. Yeah. Cause there could be some interfering signals. Like if let's say you're in, if you live in a skyscraper and like you have a bunch of other skyscrapers near you, the buildings themselves could possibly block that signal. So that it all, it all depends really. Yeah. So it's a vaccine for your cell tower. Es yeah, the essentially. Yeah, the there booster. you go. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and they, I, and it's the same I, idea for Wi-Fi as well. Pardon me? There's also like a uh, range boosters for Wi-Fi as well. Right. And again, yeah. uh, Wi-Fi, in order to activate Wi-Fi, you must have a router. Yes, exactly. Yes. So you should yeah. have it's both a, a modem and a router, actually. So like for Spectrum, for instance, if you have just a Wi-Fi plan with them, they'll send you a modem, which is one box and another box that may look similar to the image that I'm showing right now. Mm hmm. So you need both. You need a modem yes. and a router. Yes, you usually need a, both a modem and a router. And but the but the router itself, like for the modem, that's controlling your phone, your cable, and your internet. But the router right. itself is just is just it's um that's just for your internet. Okay, so if mm -hmm. you don't have a plan, uh, an all inclusive plan. You mm -hmm. can opt again uh, because you have, let's say, mixed plans. You don't want to put all your eggs in Spectrum's basket, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, you can have the internet exclusively with the router. No, not really. Not so for the, well, you, uh, in, yes and no, in a sense. So for instance, let's say you have spectrum, right? And you only have cable and I'm going to have to speed this up because um, we're running out of time, but don't worry. Um, let's say you have spectrum, but you don't have, uh, you just have cable, right? Um, and you have a Verizon phone, but you have a plan with Verizon where you have unlimited data. You can actually turn your phone into something called a hotspot. So right. it, it, it then turns into a mini router in a sense. So that internet or that data is coming from Verizon and you can totally keep Spectrum separate if you wanted to. But let me mm -hmm. ask this quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if there is, uh, let's just focus on a laptop or a tablet or a PC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you activate that with the internet? Ah, okay. So, so usually, um, when you when you get a new device or you get a new um, router or things like that, you usually are given, and it should it should actually tell you on the back of the router. You're given a network name and a password. So usually, if it, let's say we're using um, Spectrum as an example, if you get a router with them or a modem and a router on the back of the router, you're gonna see it like the display name is usually gonna be like Spectrum um zero zero or spectrum setup it's a very basic name essentially and then you get given a password and so when you're on your new device and you're looking through um your wi-fi connections you would want to find that spectrum setup zero zero and then when you click on it you'll then it'll ask you to provide a password and so you just put that password that you found on your router and then that's how you get connected right but that's not mm -hmm. as vulnerable as a hotspot, there are great exactly. More so, so usually, so for so, so for so, some hotspots, you actually can put a password on it just to put to make it more secure. Um, so that is an option as well. So, like, let's say you have it's more unsecure. Let's say you're at a Starbucks and you're using yeah. their free Wi Fi, yeah. that's where it gets a, a bit it, that's very uh, insecure, uh, not insecure, unsecure. Where you know, if you're doing banking, you know, folks could actually see, you know, they can, they can, I, I don't know the legit of it all but there is a possibility that your information could be seen that way because you're on a public um wi-fi connection but if you're on a hotspot, let's say your friend set it up for you and you both um planned a password for it that would be that would be the both of you unless you told someone else or someone overheard you then this that connection should be secure so alex bottom line uh fios through verizon is mm -hmm. therefore the only one who actually needs to break wall wherever one lives in mm -hmm. order to connect a PC, a laptop, uh, et cetera, to the internet. The I, wish, one. I, I wish I knew more about files because unfortunately in my building, they don't, we, we don't have it yet. 
Um, so I don't know the ins and outs of how they actually get it set up for, for us. No, 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 um, that's not my question. Oh, Excuse sorry. Yeah. Me. I mm-hmm. said putting aside Verizon gotcha. Bios, which gotcha, needs gotcha, gotcha. to come in and break wall, putting them aside mm-hmm. to the best of your knowledge and belief, the majority of other providers, how do they access activate internet access in a home setting gotcha okay so for instance when i was when i moved into my apartment there's usually a cable um i'm blanking on the exact name of the cable but it's a white cable that's actually sticking out of of our wall and um you would actually no no that's all new construction most it's new construction Mm -hmm. most of the people on this call Majority mm-hmm. may not be living in new construction. Mm-hmm. Oh, so for that in that front, I'm unsure because I'm just going off of the way I did it for okay. for my Thanks. yeah Thanks. yeah no no worries no worries okay so um so moving forward folks okay so we just talked about that and I'll move real quickly for this one okay so um so this icon here it's a pencil and a, a, a square right so uh, usually with a pencil and eraser. That usually means you want to write something, right? And this square is representing a notepad. Oh. And so usually this is more for composing email or sending a message to someone, okay? Um, you're usually going to find this on uh, websites or applications such as like AOL, Yahoo, Outlook, Gmail, um, Facebook even. Um, whenever you want to write a post, sometimes there'll be an icon similar to that, letting you know you actually can type something up here. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that's the icon. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, so on, on Gmail, you can see the compose icon. It's very basic. It's literally just a pencil here. And usually you will find um, like a similar to like the search bar and things like that, an accompanying um, wording just to help you um, realize what that icon's representing. Um, but sometimes you're going to see here, like on this Quora um, example here on the top left, it's showing you, you can go to the home button, the home screen, you could check your profile, you could look at your notifications, or you could set, you can make a post and, you know, write it out with that pencil and that square icon. Okay. Um, same thing for Outlook. If I'm looking through my inbox and I want to create an email without, um, I want to quickly make an email. I just look on the bottom right of my screen and there's that icon once again. And then for, for, you know, some, this one doesn't mention composing. So as long as you know what it's about, you can, you can uh, confidently press it and know that you're going to be composing an email. Okay. So moving forward, um, I believe this is actually the last slide and this is the most basic one as well. Um, and so we have three icons here and I think everyone knows that this is usually representing volume, but um, you know, this is actually showing you these three icons are actually showing you the the progress of your volume or, or your current levels of your volume. So, for instance, um, if you go here and here's some examples of the icon um, on, on an iPhone, on an Android and on Windows, um, usually if you're on your phone and you see the speaker icon with the zigzag line, that's usually your phones on on vibrate. Okay, so that means that there's no ringtone going on whenever you get a call or a text message. It's only going to vibrate. Okay, um, usually whenever there's an X right next to the speaker, um, that's representing silence or you're muted. Okay, like just like for us, like if we have if we're on Zoom right now, we um, want to mute ourselves. How there's like a little X or a little cross over the icon. Same idea here, but this one's just right next to the to the speaker icon. So that represents being muted or having no sound coming out of your device. And then once again for Windows on the bottom right hand side of your screen, you know where you have the time and the date, um, you should be able to see um, these volume icons, and it represents. When you see like the little curved lines, so for instance, for this example, there's a, there's three lines. If I only saw one curved line in white and then the rest were grayed out, that means my volume is pretty low, okay? But if I have a, if my volume is at full blast, I will see these three uh, these three lines just stay white, okay? So that's just to let you know it it tells you the levels at which your volume is currently at. All right, but okay, so folks, that was that was the that was the slideshow today. That was the workshop. 
Um, thank you for joining me. I really appreciated you taking your time to um to learn about these icons. Okay. Um, here is my contact information. Uh, my name once again is Jacob Gonzalez, and I work with Searching Care. My wonderful volunteer, Daniel. Um, he is actually a volunteer with us at our Silver Circles program, and we do provide one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, both remotely and in person. Um, in person is if you're in our catchment area. Okay, so if you want to give me a call, you can always give me a call at 212-289-5300, extension 218 if you're interested in receiving any coaching, okay? Um, even if you're not in our catchment area, we can figure something out, at least for remote learning, okay? Um, but once again, you all should have my email, but I have it here just in case. And I will be sending out an email to all of you with both the presentation and also a little take-home um, sheet just has like, a, has like eight common icons that I think are very important to learn and just know the function of them. Um, so you could have it on hand in case of anything, okay? Um, but yeah, with that being said, I wanted to just so I'll stop sharing if I can. Oh, can I stop sharing? Oh. Hello? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, did my website crash? No, we're here. Oh, it didn't crash. Oh, so sorry. Okay, so I couldn't see anything. All right, awesome. We're here. But okay, great. Thank you so much for confirming. My my computer is going all crazy today. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to thank you all once again. I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you learned something. You know, even if I know it's based and it's a pretty basic workshop, but um, I just hope that we learned some things here because it's helped me out um, learning or you know researching all these icons and whatnot. Okay, so everyone have a wonderful day. Um, thank you so much for coming out. And if you ever want to email me or send or give me a call, please do, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, so everyone. Much. Oh, it's no problem. It's thank you. I'm glad you're able to join. Thank you, thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right, everyone. Y'all have a great day. And I hope my inner my computer doesn't completely crash on me. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.